Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete. That is the skeletal remains of Mr. Pete. This is a temporary video. It'll disappear in a few days. So watch it now. It's uh, going to consist of corrections and uh, additions and apologies and stuff like that. Well, the skeletal remains of Mr. Pete has lost a lot of weight, as you know. And I don't, no matter what I do, I can't gain any weight. I have no appetite. I can eat half a hamburger or something like that. So the other day I was watching a video and it was Willie Nelson's uh, 90th birthday and someone was interviewing him. And he's built about like me, but he's 10 years older. And they said, what do you eat, Willie? Well, you know, he smokes a lot of, of wacky tobacco, I think. Well, I know he does. But anyway, uh, he says, I don't eat much. Once in a while I like an egg. I like toast. Now the guy's a millionaire. And he said, but I drink a lot of these. And he just flashed that by just like I did. So I'm like, what the heck was that? Well, finally determined that it's, it's uh, this is the Walmart. There's 350 calories in there. And uh, so I've been drinking those, well, two days worth. <laughs> but I, I hope to get some nutrition and, and put some weight back on and uh, live for another uh, two or three years. All right, I've got to talk now about my last episode of what is it? I think it was, it was either number 80 or 81. I changed the format. It was just one video and that was an abject failure and I'll tell you why. Some people liked that. But others said, no, I like the old format. But the problem is that I don't know what some of this stuff is. And I really need to have it identified by people in uh, episode one. So I goofed up on several things here, and I'm going to go through that right now. To start with, let's talk about this. This is not a tire spreader. This is made to uh, mount tires on split rims. And I'm going. several people corrected me on that, and thank you for that. And I'm going to show you a video that you can watch if you want, and you'll actually see this used in the correct manner. Now, I did have to go out in my recycle bin, because tonight's recycle, and dig that thing out. All right, enough on that. But now we've got to talk a little bit about this thing and a few other things, and then, uh, well, i got a lot more to cover, so stick with me, please. Okay, this is a video on that tool that some people thought was a fence stretcher. So here the man is actually using it right now. I hate those pop-ups, don't you? And uh, as soon as that pop-up gets out of the way, <laughs> you can see the title here. How to mount tires on split rims on a Kissel car. And you know what? There's probably a lot of different videos on that if you want to see what this thing actually does. Because I could not have been more wrong other than it is for automotive wheels. So I was right on that. Oh, another question here. I recently got, well, I got this running, this little Whedon engine, a few minutes ago. There'll be a dedicated video on this. But at that same auction, I bought this tiny little oscillating engine. I am contemplating building one. I haven't done a build. It's a very simple engine. Put it in the comments if you would watch that, or am I wasting my time? And there isn't much left. Because I know a lot of people don't like to make this kind of stuff, but well, you tell me, because you have the power now to tell me whether or not I should make that video. Okay, this is definitely a cotter pin remover, but there's all kinds of uses for it. Now, I've been using it to scratch my back. Boy, does that feel good. But the, the whole idea here was, you know, like think of the front axle. That's too big, but, you know, straightening the cotter key out, and then you got the little fulcrum here to to push it, uh, pull it out. So that's the purpose. I never had one of these before. Let me show it to you in the 1966 Sears Tool Catalog. Well, it's 99 cents <laughs> in 1966. <laughs> and there it is. Some people thought it was for moving, removing O-rings, and perhaps it is, and Caterpillar D10 tractors, but this is what O-ring removal tools actually look like. See, I don't have the strength to open a snap. And these are brass, but look at the little hooks on there. 
Now I have to go by what professional mechanics said because they said that uh, Snap-on and other companies make these and they are sold as removal tools for radiator hoses. Now I've suffered with radiator hoses all my life on these old cars. Sometimes we'd actually had to slit them to get them off the, or stick a screwdriver in there but sometimes you would bend that brass nos, uh, nozzle or whatever it is. So use it for whatever you want but that was the original purpose for it. And yes I left this out. Number two was a signal mirror. Matter of fact, it still is. And most people knew that if you were a Boy Scout or in the Army or whatever. Pretty common knowledge. But I distinctly remember standing here and removing the tape before I made that video. So I went back into the software seven minutes ago and there it was in the software. I just failed to click on it and drag it down into the timeline and that's part of being old. So I will include that here presently. Okay, I suppose everybody knows what this is. It's a signaling mirror that would be used by sailors or somebody lost at sea or out in the desert or something like that. And you held it up and pointed it at the, in a certain direction toward another ship or something like that and you you knew you were on target by looking through this little hole and uh, then the reflection of the sun and so on would signal that ship so it's an SOS mirror really a signal mirror and there's the little directions this is not the military version but these were often uh, put in a survival pack for uh, GIs or sailors or uh, aviators years ago. The one that we had uh, as war surplus was much bigger than this and we used that or thought we might need it on our ill-fated boat trip in 1966. That is me in college when I was in my prime. I still intend to do a video about this someday. I, I found all of the slides if anybody might be interested. I'd, I'd be doing it more for my own family than viewers on YouTube. So this is a signal mirror. I think there was a lanyard on ours and you know, we had it hanging from the dashboard. Never did use it although I think we needed it a couple times or about needed it. I was embarrassed and humiliated in a recent video, I forgot which one it was, where I fumbled with this E35 collet and I said there's something wrong with it, I can't get it in there. Well you know what, I was just caught off guard. I have had these for years and never used them even once and I'm, the camera's rolling. You know, I, I'm Alibi Ike here, I'm making an excuse for it, there is no excuse for it. But umpteen people said, well you fool, just take the collet and put it in there at a little bit of an angle and you'll feel it click into place and you're ready to make some chips. So thank you to you guys for that, for correcting me and straightening, straightening this old fool out. I made a recent video on these Morse taper wedges, removers, and these are so awesome. But a lot of people liked that video and I goofed up on a couple things there. You see it says US patent on this side, but the other side is Brevitus or whatever it says and uh, I took that as uh, the name of a company but evidently it means patent and I forgot whether it was French or Swedish or what. I should have known that but I do not so I'm correcting that and you know what you can buy these from Shars in a different brand I think. I think they're 30 or 40 bucks. I hope they send me a free one. If they do I will show it and they probably will sell 50 of them because they really are awesome. Matter of fact, both of these are. I don't know if they make this one anymore, so you know what those are, finally. You know what, I've got a question for you. I have been harshly criticized for selling out to Viva and other companies like that, but I very seldom do uh, videos where there's anything commercial where I'm promoting things. I talk about Sterrett and other companies that I like, but uh, I'm, not I'm not working for them. I'm not working for Viva or Banggood either, but sometimes they offer me free things as they do other uh, creators. And I think that you out there, if you were offered free things, you would bite on it too. But they do want me to present the item, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. 
but I, I have not sold out, even if you think I have, but I want your opinion now and put it in the comments below. What do you think about watching some of these videos that are highly commercialized? Now, I'm not talking about the ads that YouTube itself puts on because we don't have control over that. That's just part of life, I guess. But there are many creators, not necessarily machine shop or shop people, but they'll say, now it's time to pay some bills. And they go into a long commercial that has nothing to do with what they're saying. It, and a lot of times they're bad products, they're fraudulent products, they're snake oil. I, I've seen uh, some where they say, oh, you're going to run out of money, you better buy gold. You know, they say scare tactics. I've seen people sell life insurance and shoes and all kinds of stuff. Maybe I would too. I, mean, I, I, would, I would sell kippers or something like that, you know, if people paid me, but they, but they don't. So what do you think of those people? Sometimes they sneak into a commercial and they spend half of every uh, video begging you, just begging and pleading for you to subscribe and do, you know, do all of that baloney. I do that as a minimum. And if you think that I make a lot of money on this, you couldn't be more wrong. Now, there are people that make a lot of money, but you've got to have views. Subscribers doesn't matter. You've got to have views. And 10,000 or 20,000 or even 50,000 views doesn't produce much money. You have to have a million views. And I think you all know that Mr. Beast, the top creator on YouTube, made over $25 million last year. But I, I believe he exploits a lot of people for that, but so be it. So, all right, that's, that's enough of me complaining about that. But I am tremendously annoyed when people sneak into a commercial like that. And I usually turn it off instantly because I had to put up with that on broadcast television for too many years. I watch about one hour of broadcast television per week maximum. And that's Sven Gulli or Seinfeld or something like that. I, I just had to check out on all of the fake news and all of the lies and the politicians and the scare tactics. And I think a lot of you have too. You just can't take it. It is painful to listen to the lies. So, all right, now I want to talk a little bit. I'm going to show you my remodeling job. That's why I haven't made many uh, videos lately. So we're going to go upstairs to my computer room, my, uh, my uh, sanctuary from life as I hide from all of the troubles <laughs> in this world. Let's go upstairs. Oh, one more thing. i got to show you one more thing. Uh, I have one more Pete Bay coming on this season. That's probably going to come on tomorrow, and then that's it. So let's go over and look at those items real quickly. But they'll be on tomorrow anyway. And uh, the problem with this so far is that, you know, I've done... I've sold hundreds of items because I'm selling... I'm selling groups, but I haven't phased the, the collection. I mean, you cannot tell any difference at all. I guess it's just got to go to the auction house, or more of it has to go into the recycle bin, or to, uh, I, I do, I don't like Goodwill, but I do like a local one we have called Lily Pads, and uh, I give a lot of tools and things to uh, Habitat for Humanity, which to me is an excellent cause. All right. Over to the Pete Bay area. All right, this is the table. Uh, Pete Bay 4A. You see what's on here? And some more there. I really would like to do maybe one more with, with uh, 20 items or so. Cause I just got so much stuff here. But I have become discouraged because the post office lost one of my little engines that I sent out. And when we tried to track it, it said, we do not follow up when after six months. Well, this thing is two weeks old, and it still hasn't shown up. And it won't. They lost it. They are incompetent. Their insurance is a fraud. It is mail fraud. I know I'm ranting. I intend to rant because they're so bad. They do get it right 98% of the time. When it is your item that is lost, you would be upset too because I do have to refund uh, some money to a man. So... <laughs> Nice going, United States Post Office. You can tell that's one of our government bureaus. Okay, I'm in my newly remodeled office, hangout, man cave. That's where I sit normally when I watch my large screen, 55-inch 
LG TV. I, that's a new wall rack. It'll tilt and raise and $150 at Costco. I'm not going to show it to you because nobody cares. But uh, that was a big improvement. That's a brand new computer. It cost me $1,200. My old computer was 10 years old. Thank you for several of you that uh, contributed money for that. I'm going back to one monitor instead of uh, the two. Got rid of about uh, lots of books. New drapes. I had to hang those yesterday. I hated doing that. They're room darkening. Actually, they're too dark. We got more books. A lot of this stuff is my wife's. And uh, not everything has moved back here, but I laid this laminate flooring all the way into the closet. That's my wife's closet. She's extremely organized, unlike myself. But let me talk a little bit about this flooring. Well, we had old carpeting in here. It was just awful, and she wanted it out of here. It wouldn't have bothered me, but so I ripped that out and put in the laminate flooring. The wallpaper, I know, is horrible, but that's going to have to stay because under that there is paneling, and the planning, paneling is glued to real plaster, not plasterboard. I'd never get it off. So, anyway, this should have taken uh, one day. It took me a whole week because I'm so old and the floor was incredibly unlevel and caused me tremendous aggravation and the pain on my knees for an 80 year old man doing that. I know it was stupid, but I'm driven. I can't help it. And thank you to Paul St. Marie for saving my life with two of these kneeling pads. I could not have done it without it. Here I am. Maybe you can't tell, but I am in terrific pain right now. Many people have asked me, what the heck does this power director mean? Well, I've always used power director, but now you can't buy outright any more software. So I am using temporarily their free version, which doesn't have any uh, extra <laughs> features at all. But if I like it, because it's fairly easy to use compared to some others that I tried. You see a lot of people that are using different brands of editing software, but th that's what that means. I don't work for them or anything like that. I'm sure people are ready to rip me for that. People are pretty quick to criticize something that is free. Now I'm out in the garage, and I want to say a few other things about this Viver magnetic drill, but a lot of people got a kick out of that. Look where the arrow's pointing. I don't know if you can read that, but it says fried dough twist drill. You know, it makes no sense at all. <laughs> I don't know what it means. Well, I talked to the lady in charge that gives me this stuff uh, because she had heard the criticism. She reads the comments about <laughs> how bad some of the Chinese instructional books are, and she said they are working on that. And she writes to me in very clear, good English. I don't know if she has an accent or not, but I'm pretty pleased with the way she treats me. And there were a lot of people that were extremely critical of this. But remember, when I used it, I had not gone through any. I just turned it on and filmed it. I did not practice. I did not rehearse, which I often do. So I know I was clumsy. I wasn't sure about feeding it correctly, whether I should back off, and you know, all of that stuff. There's, there's a learning curve on that. But many of you that watch the video use these every day, and you're using the Milwaukee's and the premium brands that uh, are bulletproof, but there were some horror stories about those as well. As well. But, uh, you know, this is a $400 item, not a $1,000 item or 2000 so, you know, you do get what you pay for, but I'm still glad I got it, and you will see it reappear in uh, future videos from time to time as I discover other uses for it. But I want to talk about something else related now, and that is those big half-inch electric drills. Okay, here's my big Black & Decker half-inch drill, and I related to you a horror story at the high school where I was using one even much larger than this. It was a Miller's Falls, and it was really an old one, probably from the 40s, and it had pipe handles. You know, some of them had these pipe handles that stick way out. So I had a good grip on the thing, but it wrapped me up in the, into the cord and threw me off the bench. 
when I landed on my feet, as I told you. And then after I mentioned that, I said, please put in the comments if you ever had an experience. So you need to go back into that video and read some of the comments. There were men that were injured badly, knocked off of ladders, they're working in elevator shafts and on construction, and they are wicked because the torque is so great, they're low speed, you're not going to stall them. So most of that usually happens just as you break through the, the piece that you're drilling. So uh, read through those. I'm sure that many men have died, but of course they didn't leave a comment, did they? One more thing. Now, I told you that for optimum magnetic holding, you need something rather thick. Don't try that on sheet metal. And this is 3 8 thick, but I think somebody missed me saying that. I am fully aware of that, but I think you can laminate thin stock up and get more holding power. But don't take any chances with that. But I did not get a reaction at all from anybody when I... That wasn't a question. I said, do you realize the difficulty of drilling a large hole in thick metal? Visualize, this is a one-inch hole. Visualize bigger, you know, a two-inch hole or something. It is a major job. Matter of fact, you can't do it. Some people just plain can't, can't do it. They don't have the, the machinery or the know-how to drill a big hole. And don't tell me hole saws. I just hate hole saws on steel. Now the very reason that I got this Vivor magnetic drill is I wanted slow speed because I own five drill presses. There's two of them, but I've had so much trouble with band saws and drill presses getting slow speed with torque. They are not capable. I can do big holes on my milling machines, but as you know, this is no good for big drills. You cannot slow them down enough, and I thought that I would be able to perform some of those jobs on this machine, but I would like to think of a way to use this in conjunction with a drill press vise or some other way to hold the work. But I'm still experimenting with that. If I have any success at all, I will uh, make a video, but I have to say that uh, the lady from Vivor did contact me the other day and offered me one of their plasma cutters. Viva, I don't know if they're any good or not, but believe it or not, I don't want one. I think I'll wrap up with this little dissertation that I'm going to give you. You don't have to watch it, but many people talk about being privileged. I did not grow up privileged. We had very little money and lived in, not abject poverty, but, you know, we, we, we were not well off at all. My dad was a teacher when teachers made no money and mom did not work. I went to college in abject poverty. If you knew what we ate and the basements that we lived in, my basement right now with my shop is far better than what we lived in in college. So I did not have privilege. You go down to any campus on the day that the people are moving out of the dormitories and you will see things on the curb thrown away that you cannot believe. We went to college with a suitcase, a radio, and some notebooks. And that was it. That's, that was it. We had nothing else except what was in the furnished rooms. But let me say something else here now. Actually, no one in the world was more privileged than me and my brother and my sister because we had two parents, not one, two parents that were excellent. They were former teachers and uh, I had total privilege in that I was grounded in all of the things that are really important. None of this nonsense is going on right now. So I, I guess I was privileged and apparently very few people are anymore because that's all that matters. The material goods mean nothing. I mean nothing. This is not our world. We're only passing through. All right, I hope I didn't bore you too much. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now.